Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan. Today we're going to be talking about brushless motor, a brushless motor comparison between two motors that we have selected. Now both of these motors are going to follow the characteristics and parameters that we require within our application. However, we don't know which one to go with. How do we make that decision? Now there's a couple parameters that we'll look at first that is more of like your basic parameters and then if you want to get a little more advanced we can get into the last two parameters that will ultimately decide our power system. So let's get into it. First we'll set the the tone and we're going to talk about an application. Let's say it's a four cell lithium polymer battery. That's the application and it's going into some sort of radio control car and we've decided that based on the gearing and the tire size and all the different parameters that we have included that we need to select a motor that has a KV of about 2700. So that's our target. We know that we need um, a specific size of motor and we're, we'll get into that with our parameters of these two electrical motors. So let's get that up on the board here so we know exactly what we're dealing with. We're gonna go through each one of those parameters individually. We're gonna talk about the parameter of that motor and its significance, its role within the brushless motor. What does it actually mean? So the first one that we have here is the mass of the motor. So the mass of motor A that we have selected is 340 grams in weight and motor B is 311 grams in terms of its weight. So it's very obvious the heavier motor is of course motor A. So what does this tell us? Well, in terms of our parameters, the biggest thing that we need to know in terms of the mass is going to be the size of the physical motor itself. So we know that higher mass must mean that it's going to be a larger diameter or longer can size in terms of that motor. Now that motor, if it's physically bigger, it's going to be able to dissipate more waste heat. Therefore, if you have more waste heat, you're gonna be able to dissipate that through the can of the motor, allowing that motor to deliver more overall power. So that is kind of like the very basic form of looking at the brushless motor. Larger motors deliver more power. That is one of the first things that we have to look at. Then the second parameter that we have here is the KV of the motor. Now this is of course how we are selecting the motor itself. We wanna make sure that we select the motor based on the KV so we can suit and match our application. So the motor that we have for motor A is at 2640 kV and motor B is at 2700 kV. So we wanted in terms of our goal that 2700 mark. So motor B does fit that perfectly. However, motor A is not that far off. It's at sitting at 2640, that's only 60 kV away from our target. And really what that comes down to is a difference of gearing. Because we don't have the higher kV, we may need to go with another tooth on our motor pinion. So if we go with another tooth, instead of let's say a 16 tooth pinion gear, we go with that 17 tooth pinion gear, we should be able to match up the RPMs at the end. That's why picking a target KV is important. However, it doesn't need to be the exact KV that you have theoretically looked at or predicted or require. Now here's where we get into the more advanced characteristics of the electrical parameters of the motor. So this next one is going to be the RM value. RM value is the resistance internally of that motor. This is the copper windings inside the motor that we're really talking about. Now when it comes to resistance, resistance slows down electricity. So just by saying that alone, we know that we don't want the electricity to slow down. We want the current to be as high as possible so we can get the most amount of power out of it as possible. If we push power through a greater amount of resistance, we're gonna get more waste heat. If we get that more waste heat, then we'll end up with motors that are too hot or if they are exceeding the thermal threshold, we'll actually have to back the power down by reducing our load. So when we look at motor A sitting at 0 0.004 ohms and we look at motor B sitting at 0 0.0054 ohms, there we know that motor A is gonna be able to output a specific amount of power however, at a reduced amount of waste heat because of that internal resistance. What it tells us physically about the motor, inside of it, we know that it must have more copper in order to reduce that resistance inside of that motor. Now, we do know that the physical size of it is larger, so this does make sense to us. That is how we're able to identify the difference between motor A and motor B in terms of the winding resistance. So the last value that we have to look at is the I.O. value of each of the brushless motors. Now the I.O. value is the current 
that is operated at with no load. So if you assume that the motor is spun up at a specific voltage, it operates with a current draw. Now the reason why it does that is because it does take a certain amount of energy to keep that motor rotating under its own power. And that is based on the efficiencies of the motor at that zero load factor. So with that said, you could see motor A has a higher IO value than motor B. IO of the motor A is 3.0 amps and motor B is sitting at 2.6 amps. So really what we're looking for is the lowest number in this category. In that case it's going to be motor B sitting at 2.6 amps. That's going to be more efficient at the lower end of the power draw. When we're idling around and using our radio control vehicle relatively slowly, we expect that motor B would be or have the ability to be a little more efficient. Let's go through as a summary between all the parameters and then identify which motor we would select. So when we look at this brushless motor, let's consider only the top two parameters. So we are gonna look at the mass value and the KV value. KV value is within our targeted range. We're looking for approximately 2700 and we have said that 2640 is going to fit the bill for that. So that looks good. When we're looking at the mass of the motor, this reflects the physical size of the motor, which allows us to dissipate more heat if our motor is physically larger. Again, this is motor A that is larger in size. So based on the first two parameters, KV and size of the motor alone, I have identified that motor A is going to be the best motor for our application if we are after power. If we're trying to get the most amount of power and we can physically fit this motor into our application, motor A is the winner between those two parameters. When we look at the next parameter, our RM value, this is set in order of importance on what I look for in a motor. RM is the third most important parameter that I do look for. In this one, we could see that motor A is sitting at 0 0.004 versus our 0 0.0054. Motor A is gonna be more efficient and allow more current to be dumped at a high power output level. And this is again saying motor A is the clear winner here. When we look at motor A in terms of the IO, this is the only area where motor A loses. The parameter for IO value on motor B tells us that that motor theoretically should operate more efficiently at a low lower amount of power output. Now again, we're after a high amount of power output, so it's assumed that our brushless motor is gonna be operating on the high side of its range while we're using it in our application. Therefore, this does not necessarily matter so much to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and select motor A based on these parameters. So that's pretty much how you look at a comparison of an electric brushless motor when you're looking at all of the electrical parameters. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.